every year? Eight hundred? Eight thousand? No, eight million tons of plastic enter the ocean. That's equivalent to one truckload dumped into the sea every minute of the day. Yet, despite the scale of this problem, global plastic production continues, placing the oceans at ever increasing risk. Did you know that as many as 100,000 marine mammals and turtles and 1 million seabirds are killed by marine plastic pollution annually? That's a staggering number of deaths. But clearly, a small price is paid so that we can continue using plastic and throw it away responsibly. Marine life is an important part of our ecosystem that we need to appreciate and protect. However, the careless actions of humans cause great harm to their survival. But wait, before we talk about plastic, what is plastic and how and why is it so destructive? Is it bad as I say? Plastic is a term used to describe a wide range of synthetic materials that are used in a huge and growing range of applications. It's a new application coming into existence just over 100 years ago. However, in such a short period of time, it has affected our world in a way nothing else has. Of course, plastic is not without its advantages. Its low density, strength, user-friendly designs, fabrication capabilities, long life, low weight, and low cost have contributed to its phenomenal growth. Its users are versatile, and plastic is today used in many industries. How can something that is so useful be so harmful? Well, it's not really harmful to humans, is it? Unfortunately, this is how many of us think. However, just because it does not affect us or harm us directly, does not mean it's not going to affect us in the long run. The biggest problem with plastic, in my opinion, is in its disposal. If you see our landfill sites littered with plastic of all sizes and colors, you would know what I'm talking about. But that's not all. Plastic is largely a non-biodegradable substance. It has been estimated that plastic takes about 400 to thousand years to degrade. The effect this has on the environment is irreparable. For example, did you know that plastic bags emit carbon dioxide? Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. This means it contributes to global warming and climate change as well. But apart from being a hazard on land, most disposed plastic invariably finds its way into the ocean. And disposed plastic the way we do now there is likely to be more plastic in the ocean by the year 2050 than fish. See what I mean by plastic is destructive? Now, I understand that we humans are a strange species. Not all of us care about preserving animal lives. But what if I say that it could affect us as well? The world's equal balance, which is the natural order which keeps us all in check, may go astray, resulting in difficulties. One example is how actions could lead to a shortage of food for animals, which would, you know, also mean that animals we eat, like chickens and cows, would die in Mars, and humans would also have no food. We've got a really bright future to look forward to, don't we? Another would be how it could lead to the extinction of endangered animals. How exactly does plastic in the ocean affect marine life? Polythenes and plastics can affect marine species in a variety of ways, from entanglement and injury to indigestion and toxic contamination. The major determining factor is the size of the plastic, which can adversely affect different species in different ways and on different timescales. Fishing ropes, nets and pots that have been discarded or banded at sea are often made from plastic and can trap and entangle a variety of marine animals, from blue, blue whales to a small crab. An estimated 3,000 whales and dolphins and porpoises a year die from ghost gear entanglement. I regularly see pictures of dead turtles tangled in plastic on social media, people crying over them and saying, I'll do anything to save the poor baby. You don't have to do anything. Just one thing, leave our oceans in peace. The ocean is perhaps the most vulnerable environment to plastic waste. Once plastic enters the sea, 
it has no boundaries. Waves and storms can carry plastic to even the furthest reaches of the ocean, where they accumulate into large piles on the high seas or become embedded in shorelines and delicate coastal ecosystems. They've even been found on uninhabited islands. After some months or years at sea, plastic breaks down into smaller and smaller pieces, battered by waves and storms, eventually to sizes smaller than a grain of sand. This makes retrieving plastics from the ocean extremely difficult. In other words, impossible. Now that I've made you care, even just for a little bit, is there a solution? How can we reduce the plastic in seas? The most effective way to prevent the tide of marine plastic pollution is to focus on preventing the problem at the source. This includes remitting uh, measures to minimize plastic leakage, making plastic less toxic, and increasing the likelihood that plastics can be reused, repurposed, and recycled effectively. We need to see a shift in how we view and use plastic and move away from treating plastic as a waste material. We can also try to use alternative materials. It won't take a huge effort to take your clothes back to the shop instead of lazily asking for a plastic bag at the counter. Hopefully, with time and care, we will be able to seize the wounds that we have inflicted on our own oceans. When our own earth, it won't be easy. But when has anything ever been easy? Over to you, Madam Toastmaster.